This is Scott Jones with kstacks.com. This lesson will review the role of non-contrast head CT in stroke imaging, the pathophysiology of early ischemia, and the early findings of ischemia on head CT. There are three main clinical subtypes of ischemia. The first is the most common, which is large artery atherosclerotic disease. In these cases, there is either thrombosis of an intracranial artery, or there is an embolus produced by a plaque at a large vessel that is lodged downstream. The most common site of plaque is the carotid bifurcation. The second subtype is cardioembolic stroke. These account for approximately 20% of strokes and are seen with patients with atrial fibrillation or valvular heart disease. The last type of stroke is also common, it is lacunar strokes. These are small strokes which are often multiple and often involve the basal ganglia and thalami. These types of strokes are caused by emboli, atherosclerotic disease, or thrombotic lesions involving small perforator arteries. Imaging of acute stroke is most commonly performed with three studies, non-contrast head CT, CTA, and CT perfusion. MRI is far more sensitive for ischemia, but CT is still used because of its availability, low cost, and ability to get the patient in and out of the scanner rapidly. This lecture will focus on non-contrast CT, Non-contrast CT has three main roles in stroke imaging. The first is to detect any hemorrhage, which would preclude a patient from thrombolysis. The second is to evaluate for any other possible mimics that could be causing the patient's neurological deficits. The third is to detect any signs of early ischemia. On CT, 60% of infarcts are seen within 3-6 to six hours, and virtually all are seen within 24 hours. There are some subtle CT findings that can be seen within the first three hours of ischemia and are important to know so you can increase your chance of detecting early ischemia. One such finding is direct visualization of clot within the lumen of an artery. This is the so-called dense MCA sign and is the earliest sign of ischemia given that it can be seen immediately since clot is denser than flowing blood. Here is a case of a left dense MCA sign. In this case, there are other signs of ischemia in the left MCA distribution. However, notice that the left MCA is more dense than the right. The specificity and positive predictive value of this finding have been shown to be very high, but unfortunately this finding is not seen very often. Other more common findings of early ischemia have to do with the effects of cell death. Within one hour of ischemia, brain cells deplete their ATP resources and the sodium potassium pumps start to fail. When this occurs, cells are unable to maintain their membrane potential and water floods into the cells, causing cytotoxic edema. This process depletes sodium in the extracellular space and creates a gradient from the capillaries across the endothelium into the extracellular space. Sodium, along with water, passes from the capillaries into the extracellular space in a process called ionic edema. Ionic edema is responsible for the tissue swelling and hypotenuation you see in ischemic infarcts. Normally, the gray matter of the cortex and the basal ganglia are denser than the white matter. Ionic edema causes this highly cellular gray matter to become less dense and for the normal differentiation between gray and white matter to become lost or blurred. If there is a proximal MCA occlusion, then oftentimes the basal ganglia will be affected first because it is supplied by small lenticulostriate arteries, as shown here. These arteries are end arteries, which makes them particularly sensitive to decreased blood flow. Here is an example of left MCA ischemia resulting in a blurred left basal ganglia outline. Compare the left basal ganglia to the right. The left is poorly defined and has areas of low attenuation. These findings are more obvious on the stroke window. Make sure to always use your stroke window to help you find subtle findings of ischemia. Another early sign of MCA ischemia is the insular ribbon sign. The M2 segment of the MCA travels in the sylvian fissure and is also known as the insular segment because it supplies the insular cortex, as shown here. This segment of the MCA is most distal to both the ACA and PCA collaterals and is therefore a watershed area which is often affected by MCA territory ischemia. Here's an example of the insular ribbon sign. Notice on the right that the gray matter of the insula is maintained. 
However, on the left, the insula is not well seen and hypoattenuating. This case is shown on stroke windows, which again makes the finding more obvious. If the embolus or thrombus is more distal in the MCA, then the basal ganglia and insular cortex may be spared, and the only signs of ischemia may be loss of gray-white matter differentiation in the cortex and sulcal effacement. In this case, for example, there is loss of gray-white matter differentiation in the high left posterior parietal lobe. Also note that there's some mass effect with sulcal effacement. Compare the sulci there to the sulci here. Sulcal effacement is caused by the swelling of the gray matter from cytotoxic edema. The findings of ischemia in other vascular territories are very similar with sulcal effacement and loss of gray-white differentiation. Visit casedax.com for hundreds of additional interactive cases and a full call prep curriculum.